Hello again. So in my last video I did a um, quick tutorial on how to, an intro to uh, INI files. So in this video I wanted to extend on that, show you a little bit more advanced stuff. In this video I'm going to focus more on uh, saving settings in an INI file and also doing a user check. Basically to see are you authorized to be using this application or not. So let's go ahead and jump into that. So I already got my INI file set up here. Um, I got the section here, approved users. I'm actually going to go ahead and delete my name from there. So I got user1, Sam I am, and then I just went up to 5. You can go as many as you want. If you want to go up to 900, go for it. And then for this video, I'm just doing for my settings, I'm doing color and size for the fonts. I'm also going to go ahead and just delete those so they're blank. Start with a clean slate there. There, there we go. Let's make sure that's saved. There we go. Alrighty, let's jump into the code. So, when a person first launches your script or program, they're not going to have any settings. So what I want to do, I just want to default to size 10 with the font being black. Once they're in, they can change it to whatever they want. Um, then I'm going to have my hotkey here. I just use F1 like I always do. I'm going to do check count, my variable here. I want it to start at zero. Let's go ahead and open that there. And then I'm going to start a loop. So it's going to do check one plus plus. So that's up here. That zero is going to become a one. That's because my user one starts at one through five. And then right here, I got my INI read where I'm going to read that file. And as you see right here is that variable for user check count. So it's going to be really user one, user two, as it loops through until it uh, breaks out. Uh, if you don't really understand much about this INI uh, read, watch my INI number one video. I definitely go into a lot more detail in there, but I'm not going to do that on this video. So it's going to go through. It's going to read, you know, line one, user one. It's going to save it as user check. If user check is blank, display this uh, message box here, user not approved. And the reason for that is if that variable is blank, like here at user two, basically means, okay, I'm done. There's nothing else to read. Let's go ahead. I didn't detect that the username was um in here that's associated with the currently logged in user on this uh, computer. So I'm just going to say not approved and stop. Now if the user is contained in that file that's where it's going to break from the loop meaning that okay the current user and by the way this uh, is a built-in variable in auto hotkeys that grabs the currently logged in user. So if you know, that file contains my actual username, I'm approved, break, and it's going to continue on here to display the GUI. So we can go ahead and show you that in action. So as of right now, I am not on this approved list. So I'm going to push F1, and there's that little message box, user not approved. Let's go ahead and add me. try again don't know why I relaunched that and as you see because now I'm on that INI file I'm approved and I got the GUI here I'm go ahead and put that there uh, if you have any questions really about you know in more depth to this definitely let me know I can do a follow-up video or just reply to your comp comment depending on what it is loops can be a little daunting when you first try uh, there's so many different things you can do with uh, loops arrays all that uh, tons of different ways on how you can break out of them or pause them. So they can be uh, a little confusing when you first begin, for sure. I'll probably do actually a nice little looping video later for you guys. That sounds like a good idea. If you think so, let me know. So now that I know that I'm approved, I want to go ahead and try to grab those settings with an I and I read. And like I said in the last video, I explained these a little bit better. So I'm going to grab the color and the size and I'm going to save it as variable color and variable size. 
Uh, because there's no actual settings in there right now, they're blank, it's just going to default to this uh, code up here. So size 10, black. Then I have my GUI. So I got my you know GUI destroy. And then I got my first drop down right here. And for now, I'm just using the color red, black, green. Then I have down here the font size. I'm just randomly pick 2, 5, 10, 15. And then what I want to do, make sure I add a variable for new color. Uh, another video I did was explaining how to build GUIs. So if you're uh, curious how I made this and how everything kind of functions, definitely watch that too. And then right here, GUI font is where we're going to manipulate using our settings. So it's just GUI, comma, font, comma, S for size, and there's that variable size. As you see, it grabs from up here at the read, and then that variable color, which it grabbed up here at the I and I read. So normally, if you just want default settings, it looks something like this, where it's just like F S12 or C black, but we are using variables, so we're going to keep it that way. Uh, another thing to remember is this can be moved anywhere into your GUI, but it is only going to change what's below it. I only want it to change this text box for all this text. I don't want it changing, you know, this font color or anything. I want to keep that standard. I only want to manipulate this. So that's why I have it down here in the middle, right above that GUI um, text box. So then I have my save button. Go, save settings, which is going to bring you down here to this handler. I want to submit. That way those variables get saved. And then I'm going to write to the file so that they're saved. And then from now on, every time I launch the program, whatever I had saved uh, the last time I used it, it's going to uh, change to that, you know, whatever the font or size color I want it. So we can go ahead and try that out. So as you see, colors are blank. I'm going to go ahead and change uh, to green. Let's do size 2. I'm pretty sure that's going to be unreadable, but let's find out. And as you see, boom, boom, green, size 2. So it saved it. I'm going to relaunch, and yep, I was right. That is unreadable, but it is green. Let's go ahead and change it to red. Let's make it really big so we can definitely see it. There we go. I now have red text and size 15. And as you saw, because I said that I put the font thing down here versus up here, all the other text, both in the drop downs uh, and the titles here, remain the same and were not manipulated. Uh, my save button, even though it's at the end of my GUI, I put it above it because I also don't want that to change to that color. So that's just a good way to, you know, remember, be safe where you put this. If you don't like it changing everything, just put it in the middle of the script, depending where you want. You might have to reorganize your GUI every time until you get it right to what you need. You can save a lot of data this way. Um, I just did very basic, you know, color and size. Uh, in my last video for GUIs, I showed you how to save the coordinates here based on where you move the GUI to. So as you see, these are hard coded. So even if I move it over here and I push close, it's just going to open right back at the starting position. But in one of my videos, I show you how to save that every time you move it over here, close it, it'll always open here. You can actually save those coordinates as an INI &I file. That way, every single time you, you know, restart your computer, or restart your script or program, it's always going to be in the last location. It's very helpful to do. Another thing I do at uh, my work uh, we have a shared hard drive that we uh, use. I always put my uh, INI files on there just so they're global. And a cool thing I like to do is I want to know how many people are using the different scripts that I'm creating. So I use that A username to grab the person's uh, username, and then I have it uh, write to a file. That way I can open that file whenever I want, and I can see 
um, you know, who's using the script, how often are they using the script, why are they not using the script is usually what I'm really looking for. So you can save tons of different types of data in this. Now up here, um, if you don't feel comfortable using a loop or you just don't have very many variables like I do right now, you can always just do an I and I read, you know, multiple times without a variable and just do, you know, one, two, you know, three, four, five. You know, if you want to do it that way, it might be simpler for you if you're new to coding and you're not comfortable with a loop. But if you have a ton in there, I definitely recommend sticking, you know, with a loop. That way you're not creating, you know, 50 lines of code when all you need really is like whatever this is, maybe eight. So definitely a cleaner way to do it. So I recommend doing it this way. Uh, if you have any questions uh, with the I and I reads or I and writes, watch my other uh, video, the first one, and comment there. I definitely want to do another follow-up video because I always say in my videos I love messing around with GUIs and INI files. It's uh, really cool what you can do with it all. All right, everybody. I've always wanted to say this. I, I see all the YouTubers doing it. Don't forget to subscribe, comment below, hit that like button, and I think it's like a bell or something if you want to know about upcoming videos and be notified about them. That sounded so cheesy, but all the other YouTubers do it, so why not me? <laughs> So yeah, uh, comment below also if you have any ideas for more INI stuff that you guys want to know about. I can get fancier, re-explain stuff into more detail if you have something very specific you want to know about. Alright guys, have a good day.